É. Yeah. Hello. Greetings. Greetings. One moment. Sure. I am Erlo from Itambis. Hello, hello. I'm Max from uh, Solar System. Yes, you do not identify the Solar System, but we know which one it is. What is it that you need from us? Um, we are now learning about your planet. We are in contact with many. We want to know about electricity in physiology or the brain or DNA. Yeah. Uh, basically, I am looking at the, what's the relationship between the sequence of DNA and the electrical resonances in DNA and between different parts of DNA. There is the electrical system in most beings. This is not what you're speaking of, though. You want to know in DNA. Yeah. Uh, the sequence of DNA, how does it resonate? It depends on how the circuitry is fixed. Each DNA is a little different than the next. The circuitry that can be connected in the DNA is different one human to another. But let me tell you this, it's like the synapse in the brain. It's like that kind of an electrical charge that connects the synapse to the nervous system to, that runs a circuit through the body that causes many things to happen at one time, causing feeling, emotion, and um, encourages uh, the feelings of heat and, and sensations of all different kinds. Synapse of the brain is the electricity of the body, and it is used also in the DNA, but it is not called synapse there. But it is an electrical charge, but it is a very small one indeed. You must experiment to find where the electrical charge is going at the moment. You see with the neurons in the, the uh, neurons, electrons, whatever they're called in your DNA system. One moment, please. You see, just as the brain sets off many messages in different circuitries at all times, the DNA works similarly when it is engaged. It sends off signals to different places for different reasons. Now, the only reason that the DNA would be engaged during a uh, a person's waking hours as if the brain is not working properly and the DNA must uh, make movements on its own for uh, reasons of survival, etc. Sending impulses to the brain to see if they will react. There is impulses one to another within the DNA, but they are not interacting with the body, only with themselves for particular and uh, localized reasonings. Does this make sense to you? How does the sequence of DNA, the sequence of bases, uh, affect the electrical function? What's the major unit of, um, of resonation? You want to know that if there is a pattern... Yes. I am trying to explain to you that there is no pattern. It is rather random most of the time. If there is a pattern, that would mean that something is happening consistently in the DNA to cause it to malfunction. Just like in the brain, if something is happening that is malfunctioning, the synapse will not work properly. Same with the DNA. I am not sure that we are on the same page with this, but I do see that um, the that there is 
there is random patterns. There are several different ones. So to give you just one pattern would not be sufficient. You seem to think there is only one. I see. I think that there will be uh, some basic um, language, some basic letters, some basic um, words in the DNA, in the language of the DNA. And they this... are, yeah, that way because they will perform the best that way. Yes, they perform the best that way in human, uh, in humankind, set up the way they are. But that does not mean they have a common circuitry. And the circuitry can be different. You seem to think that, that because there is a CC beside each other or whatever you have there, is that it has the same circuitry or it draws on the same uh, pattern constantly. It can but there are many different patterns. I see you do not know that yet. Um, no, no, sure. Um, but, you know, we need to start somewhere to decipher the patterns, right? So You have to, the testing re will give you what you need. Give small charges into the DNA and watch where it moves to. You must have it set up so that the circuitry can be measured. Oh. And set, you must have it set up so that you know where the, the where it ends and begins. It usually is, there usually is a beginning and end, and it's usually circular, just like with any of circuits. Mm -hmm. um, where does it leave the how does the signal leave the DNA? How does the what? How does the signal leave the DNA? How does the signal goes goes outside of the DNA into um, surroundings? How does it work that way in the circuitry? The signal? Yes, is, the signal. Is, is, um, is, is somehow generated in the DNA and then it has to go outside. The DNA sets it up as you, you are being formed in the womb or the body to set up that the brain is the controlling system after things are created and put into shape. So the energy signal does come from the, the brain synapse and the nervous system to the DNA at times. But the, there is a signal within the DNA that can activate when necessary but it's not always activated. So how does the DNA resonate? It resonates by knowing what it has created, what it has formed, and knowing that if there's a problem, it will activate to see what the problem is, just like a scanning system. It doesn't know how to fix it always, or to provide as much help, but it lets the body know, and it lets the brain know that there is something wrong in this area. Right. So that it might be researched. Mm. I assume that there will be some basic um, buzz in the system of DNA. Some sort of uh, hum, the basic node which supports its function. Some kind of vibration, of course, there's vibration in every part of the body. Uh, the, the, vi body the body has its own vibrational symbol. Mm -hmm. it, whenever you, if, if you were to look at the body as a whole, it would give off an exact resonation of its frequency. That is how um, transporters have been able to move uh, substances and beings from one place to another because the vibration is precise within each and if you can find that reso resonation that vibration and capture it you can move that resonation from one place to another mm -hmm. because every resonation is of its own unique 
And so therefore, that is how you may move one thing to another place, because it only captures that particular vibration and no other vibrations around it. So, is this vibration electrical? It has electrical attributes, um, because God is, when, when you think of God, he is energy. And so everything is made from that energy. And so, yes, in, in some ways, when he turns light to matter, it is, has an impulse of energy just like him. Is it mainly electronic resonation, electronic electrons? Is it uh, electrons of the DNA which resonate? Yes. Uh, and they cause, since they resonate, they cause the other, they cause the vibration to go into other parts that are around them. So everything is resonating with the electron, but not as the electron. Oh. Is it more mechanical or electrical vibration? It's more of an electrical vibration, yes. You are correct in assuming that, yes. Um, is the frequency close to ultraviolet? Is it closed? No, is it ultraviolet frequency? Oh, um... Well, I, I never put it, no, it's not really, it has, a, it's unique to itself. It's not ultraviolet or any of those. It's, it has a unique frequency of its own. If it were to be of ultraviolet, then ultraviolet would affect it in a very distinct way that would not be positive. So therefore, no. Uh, other waves, uh, it's like every, every, it is, it, it has a commonality with all the different waves that you're thinking with, because it has to survive within those wave frequencies. Yes, but it cannot take on any of those frequencies, lest it be something different then. Uh, we know the whole spectrum, right? We know it from x-rays to uh, infrasound. Yes. So the frequency has to, you know, there should be some major frequencies, like a set of major frequencies. And uh, I wonder what, where to look for. I mean, it's like a big range from... Uh, it is a large range. But listen to me very carefully. You, it is affected by all of these things. All of these different vibrations have been with it for millions of years. And so, therefore, it has learned to live within all these frequencies and all these different ranges. Do you understand that? Okay. But yet, it has an identity of its own because it must. It, it feeds off, perhaps, some of these frequencies more than others. But it is unique unto itself. And it lives within the human range of positive frequencies. So therefore, those frequencies that are found most on Earth, those rays that are found most on your planet, will be the ones that you must work with. Right. Those are the most standard of the, of the ones that you must work with. The other ones do not affect, affect it as much. They do have some effect on it but not as much as the frequencies and rays that are within your planet um, surroundings. So I'm also thinking about... Gamma. Um, yes, there are many. I'm thinking about um, the DNA vibrations as music. Music is part of... Uh, something that can make DNA respond, yes. When, the, when you are in the womb, and you do call it a womb, I imagine. Yes, that would be the word that he translated. Okay, uh, the womb is a place for outside um, research. 
you can make give it sound and vibration and uh, work with the DNA to help it uh, be affected as it is developing. So vibrational outside vibrational effects will definitely affect the way that the DNA is forming and comes together. Also, there are also damaging factors as well that can come from outside sources. If you are too close to radiation or something of this sort uh, means, also that can affect the way that the DNA comes together and is affected. Of course, there is the in, in, intuitive nature of DNA to come together in the survival realm in its own way, but there can be affected changes by sound, vibration, noise, and music of all kinds. Wonderful, thank you. I think you covered the 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 main part of my uh, questions, and I wonder. I, the, I can I... only answer to a certain specification uh, of answer if. If it is an unknown research to your planet, then we cannot give you final results. We can give you clues to finding it. We can tell you that it does exist or that it does not. Mm -hmm. But you have a major thought processes about how this process should go. And um, if you have the right equipment, you will be able to find many interesting facts about the DNA and the structures and the all the different portions. This person does not know the name of the, all the different areas of the DNA, but I am speaking as generally as possible, as specifically actually as possible, about some of the things that can be done. Wonderful. I wonder if you can uh, connect me to some uh, human who would be working in uh, outside of the Earth, some uh, extraterrestrial human all right might have a knowledge on on, on that topic so maybe a human uh, can give me a little more clues on a human mindset in a human language the most of the ones that are working outside the world are actually examining the brain more than the DNA because the aliens have defined a lot of the DNA for them. The brain, however, is something that is different in every species. Okay. I will be happy to speak to a human who works on brain as well, on electricity of the brain, yes. But ah. from outside world. Yes. I will get you a doctor in that area. If there is one with DNA or neural surgery, please speak to me and identify yourself so that we may call upon you. Thank you. A doctor for DNA, brain, neuroscience, something that might help this doctor to move forward in his experimentations. Uh, a couple of corrections. I, I'm specifically looking for electrical part of it. And, electrical portions and i'm not doing much experiments it would be more theoretical work on my side theoretical please define not doing experiments just thinking and computationally research things so you're going to write about it but you're not going to actually experiment with it yes how is that possible uh, i can rely on published results of others but i don't have enough uh, funds for experimentation i see I will see who is out there that will be interested in this. They are listening. All right. Mm. It was good to speak with you. I'm sorry I could not give you more information. Thank you. Your help was nice. Greetings to you. Greetings.
Ah. Ah. I am um, Dr. Josiah Cornish. I'm from Halana, a doctor that has been sent to um, look in on the hybridization program and study brain effects. Also, I work on humans and hybrid brains alike. Mm -hmm. And I know some things that you may be interested in. I am not sure if I'm your the right person or not. Uh, at least uh, it's my first contact with um, uh, scientists from that area. So that's that's by itself is very interesting. Yes, the brain uh, um, in the hybrid peoples is a fascinating thing for they bring on the uh, human elements as well as alien elements in very different ways between each of them. Um, the DNA is affected by the percentage of uh, how much DNA from one species to another. The uh, I don't know how to say it for humans, but there is a definite factor of how much DNA in, entwines itself within the, the columns, the cords, whatever you want to call them. There are many different words here for the things I am trying to describe. Are you, are you a human? Yes. Ah. Okay. I have come here, I've been here for about 21 years. Wow. But I've actually been to three different planets. This is my third planet, and this is the first time working with hybrid children and, and adults. Wow. I've been working in this area for the last three and a half years now. Yeah, tell me most interesting part of your science. What, what, what are you finding? I'm finding that the culmination between humans and hybrid people is one that is greatly strengthening the intellectual, uh, the IQ, as well as the intellectual, the emotional IQ. They, have, they are charged with a different kind of value system almost from birth. It is like they have taken on both species and combined them together and brought forth something totally new. This is something that I did not expect. I expected that one species or the other would be dominant in the hybridization, but as it comes to, to light, only a few cases are this way. Uh, most are almost half and half. What's the mechanism for telepathy? What's the bi biophysical mechanism? The physical mechanism for telepathy is that the sensitivity of the brain, the brain becomes more sensitive to everything out on the outside, meaning that uh, right now your brain is only working to... Uh, take care of everything on the inside of your person. Whereas now, in a telepathic world, the brain also reaches out to the outside and is aware of things outside of its um, own body mm -hmm. and reaches into the aura mm -hmm. for a sensation. What's the physical nature of aura? The physical nature of aura is the energies and emotional relationship to the body. You see, you have an aura that tells me what your emotions are or what you are sensing in each part of your body. There may be a different color of aura in your head than in your hips. 
So you may find that your aura changes as it moves around the body because it is telling who you are to at that moment to other people. Whereas now the aura is becoming a sensor to other people and uh, wanting to know how they are feeling as well. But what's the physical nature? What it is it made of? It's, it is made up of energy. Can you help me to identify that energy in terms of human science? Uh, we don't, we don't have any, any, um, it's like the sun has a Corona. You have a Corona as well because you are an energy field. So it's not electromagnetic, is it? It's not what? Electromagnetic. It is uh, caused by some electromagnetic uh, experiences, but it is because you yourself are an energy field. Mm -hmm. uh, where is the memory stored? Where is the memory stored? It's stored in many places of the brain. There, the frontal lobe is one of the places that is stored for a great many things. But there are subconscious areas of the brain as well where a lot of things are stored and can be recalled when that portion of the brain is open. I mean, in which molecular structures is the memory stored? It's stored in the gray matter. Ah. Is it recorded as, um, what is the biophysical nature of the storage? Is it uh, some kind of molecular structure? It, let me tell you this. You understand what pawns are, P-O-N-S. Do you understand what a pawn is? No, I forgot. Hold a on. pawn is a connector. It connects one portion of the brain to the other portion. Okay. It is something that is... Uh, that helps the circuitry of the brain be able to do many things at once. You may think, you may feel, you may experience all things because the pawns connect like between the thymus and the cerebral cortex or the parietal lobe and the cranium or all of the above with the banula oblongata. They can all be activated at once by the pawns, which are connectors, and the lures. Lures are smaller, and I do not think that you use that word on your planet. But we use the word lures. They are smaller than the pawns. They are more like the circuitry that works with the synapse. Pawns, such as the ones in the gray matter area, can be activated and are activated when certain, when the human is aware. Vision can react, uh, cause reactions, sense of smell, taste, hearing, touch. Um, information can cause um, pawns to react. So there are many things that cause this circuitry to work the way it does. And these are controlled by synapse. At least many of them are. Synapse is the electrical current that snaps in the brain. So, what 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 structure does the does the, the store the like short term memory and long term memory? Uh, the frontal lobe stores most memories uh, for instant activation. That's where your instant activation is in the front part. But you must understand there is information all over the brain, but the, this, the things that you know and uh, understand uh, as far as intellectually are on the top in the cranium and on the frontal lobe. Now reactions, breathing and all those other things there are all these things that I've spoken of have more than one function. So the parietal lobe is where most motion for the limbs is caused. And the cranium has breathing of, uh, portions and things of that nature. So you, um, 
you must understand it's not just one place that will be um, storing all your information or even all the intellectual information. I'm referring to uh, molecular structures. Which part oh. of the, which part of the cell is it? Is the uh, memory stored in neurons or between the neurons? Between them. Ah, so are they stored in glia? In what? Glia are the type of the cells which are surrounding the neurons. So there are two types of the cells in the brain, glia and neurons. Neurons are tra transmitting the electricity and glia is not. Correct. The storage area would be in the, in the non, uh, in the glia, yes. Uh, what part of the cell would be storing the energy? Uh, the, the information. What part of the cell would be storing the information? Uh, the whole cell. Ah. The whole cell is, has, uh, uh, when is activated, releases what information it has. Uh, how does the cell communicate the information if it's not electrical? It is electrical in some ways. When the neuron uh, reacts, it stimulates that area. Mm -hmm. And so therefore the information is released, but it cannot be the part that is electrical because otherwise it would be constantly be, it would be in the way, the information would be in the way of the circuitry. So it has to be in a separate area away from where the electrical charge is. So. Uh, for long-term memory, electricity cannot be stored, so it has to be transform, trans, uh, formed from electrical way, electrical uh, information to some other sort of information, long-term long storage. What kind of molecules would be stored in that information? What kind of molecules? Yes. I'm not sure if there is different kinds of molecules that store long-term information. It is the... The, what did you call them? The glia. glia. The glia yeah. is it can take on different functions. It is, can store for long term or for short term or for. Uh, it's not something different necessarily. It might be something that is not accessed as easily or is in a different area which uh, not much access is given with electricity. The electronic movement. Okay. Uh, so, um, short-term memory lives, uh, short-term, but long memory lives uh, tens of years. Oh, yes. And we know that tens of years, not, none of uh, molecular things, uh, uh, all the proteins and all the other components of the cell uh, go away very fast. They uh, uh, circulate in that fast yeah. that the, the memory cannot be stored there. So, the only thing that is... Uh, survives it long is uh, DNA. So is there long-term memory stored in the DNA? There is some, yes. But also you must remember, when you rethink of something, when something comes up from the past that you have thought of, not thought of for a long time, it's re-recorded in, in the glia. So you will have a continuous memory of it. It may not be exactly the same as what you first experienced, it would be a, a reflection of that thought or memory, but it is re-recorded in the glia when you think of it again. That is how some long distant, long term, long lasting memories survive is because they're thought of every now and then and they are brought back in and re-recorded. Uh, there is also a theory that uh, the memory is not stored in the brain. It's stored somewhere in the ethereal body. It would not be logical. Other way around, like when the soul leaves the body, it keeps all the memories, right? So it will be very logical to have uh, all the memories uh, stored outside of the body, somewhere in the soul. Yes, the mem this memory has the... The soul has memories, of course, and so do all the chakras. Right, so it looks like memory is stored in the chakras, not in the physical molecules. But it is not logical to say that all memories are not physical. 
uh, there are examples when the organs are transplanted from one human to another, like uh, livers or other organs. Uh, yes. Another, uh, the, the recipient of the organ uh, uh, has the memories of the person who, of, the, of yeah. the donor. So it looks like the memories can be stored in uh, outside of the brain somewhere. Yes, else. they can. There are memories that are stored in different places depending on what the memory is. Now, those memories that are in the chakras are usually memories from past lives or things that are not relevant to the present. But those that are in the body, that are remembering in the body, remembered in the body, are usually uh, very strong thoughts that are either traumas or things that are very important. Mm -hmm. People, uh, when they have out-of-body experience, they uh, shift out of body and they still retain the personality and memories of the past, but they certainly can view, the th view their surroundings from out-of-body locations. So that would... Well, let me tell you this. Yes. The mind, body, and soul, all three have the same memories. So the spirit, as it goes, has the same bodies as the mind. They're all one, you see. And so the body has the same memories as the spirit. The, and the spirit has the same uh, memories as the soul. Because they are all together in one place. And they can be transmitted around the body. But when you leave your body astrally, you take that version, the perfect version of your body with you, out of the, uh, your, the spirit, out of the body, and it has all those things with it. But that does not mean that it's left, these, this consciousness or these memories have left the body as well. I see your point. Uh, I'm sure al the aliens have the ways to write certain information in the brain, like if they needed to study languages, they just download them. What's the interface yeah, yeah. of download? They can download, and it goes to all parts. It goes to mind, body, spirit, yes. Now, emotions are a different thing. It doesn't go to the emotions directly, but the emotions are affected by the download. But it is not part of the information necessarily. The emotions are created afterwards once the information is revealed. Mm-hmm. Axon versus um, synapse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you define as synapse? How do I define synapse? Yeah. Synapse is the, the charge that uh, starts the circuitry moving to the, the, either the nervous system, these, whatever it needs to start. The, uh, there are certain systems in your body. You have the circulatory system, the energy systems, the endorphins, uh, the uh, chemical system in your body. You also have uh, pituitary, many others. There's all kinds of systems that the body has. And the synapse starts uh, the circuitry that, that uh, sends the message to the body. Good. So um, you just... Uh, in the translation, there is a certain problem with Jim's understanding of synapse, so I need to correct it. So, uh, neuron is a cell, right, which has lots of uh, append appendages, which are called axons. Axon. Okay? Yes. And synapse is when one axon is touching another. That point of connection is called synapse. Yes. So, neuron, axon, synapse. So is the memory stored in synapses? It can be, but it's not always that way, no. It can be, though, because there, in synapse, you have regular functions that you do every day. Breathing, touching, these things um, have stored instinctive memory. Right. Thank you. Um, so what's the interface? How is uh, the language programmed in the, in the mind? 
How is it in the mind? How? No, when the aliens download uh, download to you to a person new information, what's the interface? How? What's the what the physical field do they use to program uh, certain knowledge into the mind of a human? It depends on the human. They take the area which would be most fertile for thought, that kind of thought process. There are certain areas of the brain in humans that are uh, very good for learning languages, but it's not the same in every human because people look at language differently as individuals. But there is a certain part of the brain that does uh, handle that information better than others. So it would be from your from the individual standpoint however where you learn to speak your language would be basically where they would put a language download i see i have about 10 minutes left and i would like to invite you gananda to speak on uh, spiritual personal matters i thank you very much for your help it was very interesting to speak to you and i would like to continue speaking to you to learn more thank you I'm sorry his terminology was not correct about some things. I can only hear what I am saying, not what he's saying to you. Okay. Thank you. Have a very good day. You too.